What's up guys, welcome to Munchkins Gaming, where we take your gaming to the next level. This is Munchkins logging in to bring you another city of Final Fantasy Opera Omnia video, and welcome back to another Should You Pull video, where I give you my reasons and my opinions for upcoming banners coming to the global version of the game. In today's video is going to be on Gladio's event banner, which features him alongside with Sabin, and you get Vayne as well here, and of course you can still get Kuja's Burst on this banner. Now before we start, like and subscribe as always, it does help the channel guys, and I really do appreciate it. And now without further ado, let's start this video. Okay guys, we'll start this off with Gladio's first and second abilities, and of course I will include all the passives here as well. His first ability is called Tempest, which will raise his Bray based on his attack before doing a 4 hit AoE melee Bray plus AoE HP attack. The HP attack is going to be split, and this will raise the party's Bray based on the HP damage dealt. This will have a 150% max rate overflow limit, and will increase the damage when attacking a single target. Now this will grant him a buff called King's Shield, which is a stackable buff up to 10 and will grant the allies the Royal Guard buff. Now King's Shield basically will raise his Max Brave in attack in increments of 4%. So basically once you get to 10 stacks, this will be 40% in total. This will also increase his defense by 80% and reduce incoming Brave damage by 60% and reduce the incoming HP damage by 20%. Royal Guard will defend your allies, this will reduce their Brave damage dealt by 60% and also reducing the incoming HP damage by 20%. Now as for his second ability, it's called Dawn Hammer, this will raise his Brave based on his attack again before doing a 6 hit AoE melee Brave plus single target HP attack. This will raise the party's Brave based on the HP damage dealt and will also have a 180% max brave overflow limit. This will also increase the damage dealt when attacking a single target and will also inflict a, a max brave down debuff. This will grant him the pride of the crown's guard buff which basically raises his max brave and attack by 40%. Now while this buff is active, he will have access to his brave attack plus which will raise the party's brave base on his attack and before doing any attacking, which then will do a melee brave attack. HP attack plus will raise the brave base on his attack before attacking and will do a melee brave plus HP attack. This will raise the party's brave base on the HP damage dealt. Okay, now let's talk about his EX ability, which is going to be Maelstrom. This is going to do a 6 hit melee brave plus HP attack, which is going to be delivered twice. This will have a 120% max brave overflow and will raise the party's brave by 150% of the attack after the last HP attack. This will grant him another stacking buff called Trial of Gilgamesh 2, which basically will gain one stack every time he is receiving an attack. Trial of Gilgamesh will raise the party's uh, attack and max brave overflow at 22% 20, at the first stack and will add increments of 2% per stack. The party will also recover HP by 2% at one stack and 2% increments per stack. Now at 1 out of 3 this will raise the brave damage dealt by the EX ability and at 2 out of 3 this will extend the duration buff for the Gilgamesh, Trials of Gilgamesh sorry, and at 3 out of 3 this will increase the recast speed. Now once you realize this weapon at 0 out of 3 this will have an increase in potency, will gain a 20% splash damage, at 1 out of 3 this will increase his max brave and attack by 40%, at 2 out of 3, when the quest starts, he will get Pride of the uh, Pride of Crown's Guard and Trial of Gilgamesh buff as well, as well as uh, having a free usage for his abilities for his first turn. And finally, at 3 out of 3, this will turn to a 4 hit melee Bray plus HP attack that is delivered 3 times. He will raise his Bray by 20% after the first and second HP attack. This will have an increase in Brave potency, as well as increasing the max Brave overflow up to 150%. 
He will also have access to his Brave Attack Plus Plus and HP Attack Plus Plus while he has Pride of the Crown's Guard acti buff active. So his Brave Attack Plus Plus basically will, will still re pretty much remain the same, increasing the party's Brave based on his attack, and then we'll do a t instead of a one-hit melee Brave, this will do a two-hit melee Brave attack. His HP attack relatively almost stays the same as well. Uh, the only difference is this time it is going to be a two hit melee brave attack and will have a 120% max brave overflow limit. As for the sphere you're getting for his EX plus, it's called HP damage raging attack all. After taking an HP attack, this will raise the party's attack by 2%, which can be stacked up to five times. Alright guys, now let's move on to Gladio's LD ability called Impulse. This will initially only have two uses and this will basically raise his Brave by 200% of his attack before attacking. This will do an 8 hit AoE melee Brave plus AoE HP attack. Now this will also increase the Brave damage dealt when attacking a single target. This will actually have a 200% max brave overflow limit the hp damage is going to be split so i guess that's why it's so high this will also raise the party's brave by 20 percent of the hp damage dealt this will also grant him another buff called perfect guard for three turns now perfect guard while this is active he will basically counter all of the brave and hp attacks that he is going to be uh he's going to be receiving now the way his counter is going to work is basically he will raise his brave first by 150% of his attack and then will do a 3 hit melee brave plus HP attack on that particular target. This will have a 150% uh, max brave overflow limit as well as a 50% splash damage. This will raise the party's brave by 20% of the HP damage dealt. This will also inflict a new uh, debuff called knockdown for four turns now perfect guard will basically reduce his brave um, HP damage to zero and increasing his debuff evasion by hundred percent Again, he will counter all attacks and knockdown is basically a debuff that will reduce attack and defense by 40% Now at one out of three limit break this will increase his attack by 10% in increasing the brave damage dealt uh, 2 out of 3, again increasing his attack by another 10%, extending the knockdown by 4 turns. And at 3 out of 3, this will raise his attack by another 10% and will increase the usage of his LD ability by 1. Alright guys, so after hearing all this information regarding Gladio's abilities, his EX, his realizations, and of course his LD ability, what do I think of Gladio overall? Now, I know Gladio has been hyped up since, you know, we kind of kind of got into the Lefania era. Um, yeah, I mean, even back in the Chaos era, you know, there were some already some people saying, just wait for Gladio, just wait for Gladio, he's going to be really great. And I do agree that he is a very good character, a great character, a great tank, an amazing tank. Uh, he pretty much copied what Galuf does, but pretty much do do it a lot better than Galuf. So if you think about it, Galuf requires cover uh, for everyone basically uh, in order to counter. He cannot counter magic attacks. That's the biggest um, difference, I think, when it comes to their um, counter. Gladio will also do... Uh, a lot more damage than Galuf's counter because this has a 50% splash damage and I do believe this does more hits as well I can't remember on top of my head for Galuf but for some reason my gut is saying he does a two hit melee break plus HP attack as his counter um, but I could be wrong on that don't quote me on that but just having that splash damage already is already uh, much better in my opinion um, Not only that Gladio does all the other stuff much better as well. He actually can party battery um, I know Galif can do that, but pretty much with Gladio every single thing he, he does even with his HP attacks basically will grant brave it, it's just 
pretty much insane that his entire kit will give Brave to the entire party in some shape, way, or form. Whereas with Gallif, um, you know, he does it to a certain extent, but not as much, right? Um, Gladio also has a Provoke, so um, that's something Gallif is sort of missing, but at the same time, he doesn't actually need, if you get what I mean. Uh, Gladio sort of needs it in a way, um, but this is more so for more so because he cannot counter as long as Galuf. Perfect Guard just lasts for three turns. And if I have anything, you know, against Gladio, it's probably that. Uh, I, I was just a little bit surprised that at two out of three, instead of increasing Perfect Guard's duration, it actually just increased the knockdown debuff knockdowns debuffs duration which is um, a little bit surprising but then again this is a pretty strong counter and if I if I you know if they added more to that like a longer turn duration it, but you basically won't get hit <laughs> so that is something that you know Gladio does better I mean better in terms of damage, but Galuf has that longevity with the counter. Gladio also has a debuff, as I mentioned, which reduces the attack and defense by 40%, and he also has party healing. I mean, there is nothing this man cannot do. Uh, I suppose it's a little bit unfair to compare him to Galuf, but because of the counter dodge kind of mechanic, I... I I feel like Galuf is the best comparison, uh, but if you're comparing him with other tanks, something like Warrior of Light, um, if you already pulled for Warrior of Light, I mean, you pretty much have a decent tank already. Um, I've just got to say that Gladio is probably going to do a little bit more damage overall because of the counter. Uh, we're taking that into account, not just the abilities. So. Um, yeah, he will just do a better job at damage, but I think Warrior of Light may get some flack, but he, Warrior of Light does do a lot of things that Gladio does as well, like Party Battery, I mean, all his, Warrior of Light's ability basically grants ba um, Brave as well, apart from his HP attack, of course, um, and, you know, he does a little bit of healing as well with his EX ability, so it's not like because you know Gladio came, Warrior Light is going away, and Warrior Light is still a decent character. So if you already pulled on Warrior of Light, and you're a little bit iffy about Gladio, he's certainly someone that you may skip. But I would highly recommend still picking up, only because uh, you, the more tanks you have, actually the better you are with your account and you know clearing some of the hardest content sometimes you will need um, uh, multiple tanks especially with dimensions and so overall i think gladio is a um, is an amazing character to pick up all right guys so we're finally at the end of this video and i probably you know kind of implied it uh, during during the duration of this video whether you should pull or not but I suggest go ahead and pull uh, obviously there is there are certain caveats to pulling as always I mean I don't mention this uh, all the time on my videos because I feel like it's sort of like uh, a common sense at this point uh, because I feel like I keep uh, before I kept repeating and repeating it myself and um, some people might be thinking you know you're just saying the same thing but the thing here is if you have warrior of light already right gladio is a luxury is going to be a luxury for you I still would highly recommend pooling because uh, like I said earlier having multiple tanks is better for your account because things like Dimensions End, which will lock your characters, you know, um, uh, for certain stages, it's not like you can keep keep reusing the same characters for the next one, the next one. So having an extra tank is also going to be very helpful for your account. 
So that's all I gotta say when it comes to the Warrior of Light versus Gladio debate. Uh, when I first released Warrior of Light, um, a lot of, well, uh, some people were saying just wait for Gladio, he's, he's so much better. But I think Warrior of Light does have, over, has a little space um, when it comes to like content. Uh, sure, he's not doing a lot or much more damage than Gladio in terms of just raw damage, I suppose. But if you did get Warrior of Light's burst, he does, um, you know, p pack up quite a punch as well with that one. So that's all I have to say about that. Now the other, the other caveat is the Lightning is coming as well. Uh, he, she is pretty much the next banner after this. Uh, and will feature both her LD and of course her burst weapon and Lightning is gonna be an insane DPS character which a lot of people might want to pick up Because he, she is going to be pretty broken for a little while. I mean Gladio is kind of broken in his own way But Lightning is going to be pretty broken as well in her own way, right? So when you if you're tight on resources and you feel like I, I have to pick one or the other kind of like my position right now I, I feel like I'm I don't I, I won't have enough resources um, and it's scary for me to miss out on any of these two characters and I'm really hoping I do get both of them um, I think just take your pick right take your pick Pick your favorite. Who do you like more? Who, who? What does your account need? That's basically what this is. What does your account need? Do you need a tank? Go ahead and pick Gladio. Do you need a DPS? Go for a Lightning. So, um, a lot of the times, it's kind of for me have been kind of implied that you guys know, you know, what you need or what you're looking for. Um, and I think I sh I have to do a better job at saying these stuff as well. Um, and I will try my best to remember all the time uh, and not just say, okay, just pull, you know, um, I, I do try. <laughs> and so with that in mind, basically to summarize, if you have Warrior of Light, you don't need a tank. I would still recommend pulling, but you have the choice to actually pass on this banner. I don't know who will. <laughs> because I know like majority of people will pull <laughs> but that is an option and the other thing is if you prefer lightning you, you don't need a tank you know you already got like I said you got warrior of light you're pretty happy with him and you have other tanks in your roster that you haven't used yet and you need a DPS I say wait for lightning because either one is a really good choice if you are very tight on resources. Anyway guys, I think I will end the video right here. Please do remember to click like and subscribe if you haven't already. It does help the channel and I really do appreciate all the support that you guys give me. As always, I would like to just remind you guys that we are trying for that 3000 subscriber by the end of the year. I mean, I'm not holding my breath, but hopefully you guys do help me at least get close to that point. Um, I would really, really appreciate it. You can follow me on Facebook and on Twitter as well at Bunchkins Gaming. And leave down in the comments below what are your plans for Gladio's banner. Are you going all in on this banner? Or are you going to wait for Lightning's banner to come around first? And then see how you go on that. That is another option, really. Like, If you like Lightning more, go for Lightning. And if you get lucky, you can go back to Gladio's banner. And, you know, try your luck there. That is also another option. So let me know down in the comments below um, what your plans are. This is Munchkin logging off. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next level.